lab material for next week. Uh, next week in lab we are going to be looking at uh, epithelial tissue. And so this is a section of mesothelium. Mesothelium is a type of simple squamous epithelium that lines the surfaces of organs and body cavities. This is an unusual uh, view. This is actually a surface view. Um, and so this is a single cell layer thick. And uh, this very nicely shows the uh, geometry of these cells, which have roughly six sides. You can see they're uh, some are a little bit more um, irregular in shape than others. Uh, but if you look closely, you can see r roughly six sides on most of, most of these. Uh, you can see the nucleus, which is a dark prominent staining structure in the middle of the cell, uh, surrounded by the abundant cytoplasm around that. So each here you're seeing individual cells in a characteristic cobblestone appearance, which is typical for this type of tissue and looking at this type of view. So uh, this is mesothelium and this is the only tissue that we have that is uh, sectioned in this way. So if you see this surface view of a simple squamous epithelium, then you'll be able to identify it as mesothelium. This is a section from the cortex of kidney. This structure right here is known as a renal corpuscle. We're going to look at that in more detail later on in the trimester. Uh, note that uh, you can see this balled up structure here. This is actually a balled up capillary structure that we'll discuss later. You can see an empty space surrounding it. It's known as the renal uh, space or urinary space. But the structure we want to focus on for this week's lab is this thin layer of simple squamous epithelial cells here. This is part of what's known as parietal's layer of Bowman's capsule which is a portion of the renal corpuscle that's discussed in your lab manual. Uh, and it's this layer right here that's composed of a simple squamous epithelium. So uh, this tissue we call, call mesothelium. It is also a simple squamous epithelium. If I ask you what this is on a quiz though, you need to be as specific as possible. So the correct way to answer this is to say that it's a mesothelium. You can also write simple squamous epithelium if you want to, but you certainly need to include mesothelium in your answer. Uh, if I ask you what type of epithelium is the parietal layer of Bowman's capsule as seen on this slide, the correct answer is simply simple squamous epithelium. Uh, it doesn't have any more detailed classification than that. <coughs> Here's a section of the inside of the heart. So this would be a chamber of the heart that would uh, normally be filled with blood. This is the inner portion of the part heart called the endocardium here. The superficial most layer of the endocardium is composed of a simple squamous epithelium, a single cell layer thick. It's very thin. And uh, this is also classified as an endothelium because endothelium is type of simple squamous epithelium that lines the cavities uh, or lumens of all of the uh, blood vessels in the circulatory system as well as the chambers of the heart. In this slide we can see some blood vessels of various sizes in uh, cross-section. Uh, these are relatively small blood vessels and they have a wall that's composed of uh, some musculature and connective tissue but the innermost or superficial most layer adjacent to the lumen where you can see blood cells here is also composed of an endothelium again because this is part of the circulatory system so both the inside lining of the heart as seen on this slide or the lumen of blood vessels is always composed of uh, or the lining of the lumen of blood vessels is composed of an endothelium here we have a larger sized artery and uh, again, you can see it's much larger. The wall is much thicker. There is a lot of different layers of smooth muscle here. Um, you can see the lumen is much larger. But again, despite its size, the superficial most layer is only a single cell layer thick, uh, a single layer of endothelium. So be able to classify endothelium in different size blood vessels as well as lining the chambers of the heart. 
This is a section of the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland has a very characteristic appearance uh, because of the presence of these follicles, which are these circular structures that vary in size. Some are quite small, some are quite a bit larger than that. Um, the thyroid gland produces various hormones. Uh, its main hormone product, T3 and T4, uh, is produced and stored in the lumens of these follicles as a uh, product which is known as colloid. Colloid tends to have a kind of cloudy or flocculent appearance uh, when stained with H and E sections. Uh, what you want to look at in this tissue is the particular type of epithelium that comprises the walls of these follicles. So if we take a closer look uh, at a couple of the, these follicles here, you can see that is lined with a simple cuboidal epithelium. You can tell this epithelium is simple cuboidal because the cell, there's only a single layer of cells and the cells are approximately as tall as they are wide, uh, which is characteristic for cuboidal cells. Uh, notice the nuclei are generally spherical in appearance, also common for uh, simple cuboidal epithelia and are located roughly in the middles of the cell. Moving along, this is a section from the jejunum of the gut. We looked at this uh, a little while ago and uh, we're actually going to look at the epithelium in more detail. I told you a couple weeks ago that this was uh, the epithelium of the gut is a simple columnar epithelium. To be able to see that you need to view it at a high magnification. So uh, let's take a closer look at uh, the surface of the plica circularis here. You can see these large finger-like projections which are called villi. Um, you can start to see some of the cells but you really need to examine this tissue at a higher magnification around 400x to be able to get a good feel for the morphology of the cells lining these villi. So here's a higher magnification view. Uh, this is one villus taking up the screen here and you can see that the cells which are lining the surface of this villus are taller than they are uh, wide and so they're classified as a simple columnar epithelium. Columnar because of their shape taller than they are wide and simple because it's just a single layer of cells. You may notice other cell types such as goblet cells dispersed among these uh, columnar epithelial cells. Also notice that the position of the nuclei in columnar epithelium is a little bit different from cuboidal cells. The nuclei are closer to the basal surface so that the apical surface of these cells largely just contains cytoplasm. In addition, the nuclei often tend to be a little bit more uh, ovoid or elongated in, sh in shape than you would find uh, for uh, cuboidal epithelium. Here's an even higher magnification view of a simple columnar epithelium. You can see several goblet cells here, 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 and here. Uh, you can actually see the lateral border between some of these cells, but you could also just look at the nuclei and count the nuclei uh, to see how many cells are in these layer because each of these cells only possesses a, a single nucleus. If you look at the apical surface of this columnar epithelium at the high magnification view, you can see uh, a couple structures. One is this dark eosinophilic line, this dark pink line towards the top. This is a structure which is known as the terminal bar. I've talked about that in lecture, or we'll talk about it in lecture before you see this. Uh, again, the terminal bar is composed of tight junctions, intermediate junctions, and desmosomes, and those are found at the apical surface. Being able to resolve all of those different zones of cell junctions requires a higher magnification that's only achievable using electron microscopes. So you can't actually see those in independently. Instead, they all appear to be the same structure here as a terminal bar, which is visible uh, in a light microscope. Above the terminal bar, you can see this fuzzy pink structure. This is called a brush border. A brush border is composed of microvilli, another apical specialization which you find on the surface of the cells. 
recall microvilli from class are composed of a core of microfilaments and they're very small structures smaller than other apical specializations like cilia uh, and so they can't be individually resolved using a light microscope however you can see them all together as a uh, an apparent fuzzy border which is called the brush border that you can see here. So try to observe the uh, terminal bar and brush border in this tissue in your own microscopes. This is a section through uh, trachea which is part of the upper respiratory tract. We're going to look at different parts of the wall of the trachea later on. For today, we're just going to focus on the superficial layer, which is composed of a specialized type of epithelium called pseudostratified uh, ciliated columnar epithelium. That's kind of a mouthful, so we usually just abbreviate it to PCCE. Um, if you're identifying this epithelium, if you're writing your answer on a quiz, you can either write it out. Uh, all the way, or you can just abbreviate it as PCCE, which most people do, but be able to recognize it written out if it were written that way on a practical. This epithelium gets its name because it appears to be stratified, but it's not actually stratified. Uh, in fact, the nuclei are simply uh, at different levels within the cells. So all of the cells are actually attached to the basal surface of this tissue here at the same point but some of these cells have their nuclei lower uh, in, the, in the cell giving a false appearance that there actually are multiple layers of cells. Some of these cells their cytoplasm doesn't go all the way up and those are the cells that have their nuclei towards the basal layers. The nuclei of these cells tend to be more uh, regular in appearance, more spherical. Other cells have their nuclei located in a more apical position in the cell, closer to the basal surface than the rest of the cytoplasm, but not as basally oriented as uh, the other nuclei and other layers of cells. These cells, their cytoplasm actually goes all the way to the top. So um, on the surface of the cells in PCCE, you can see the cilia, the little hair-like projections, which contain an axoneme core that we talked about containing the uh, nine sets of microtubule triplets that we discussed in lect lecture. You can also see the terminal bar underneath the uh, cilia in these cells as well, which is very similar to the ter terminal bar in a simple columnar epithelium. So this is PCCE. Here is a another section of PCCE and you can see this particular section is particularly rich in goblet cells. Again these are these uh, sort of wider more pale cells that contain mucus and you tend to find lots of goblet cells associated with PCCE because they secrete the mucus that traps dust and other particulate matter um, that gets swept away by the cilia at the apical surface. This is a section of transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelium is found in the bladder and uh, parts of the ureters and it contains a specialized type of epithelium. This is only the surface of the bladder. Most of the wall of the bladder is uh, muscle or connective tissue. This is only a small portion of it that is composed of the transitional epithelium. So this is a very high magnification view here. You can see it's actually a type of stratified ep uh, epithelium. There are many layers of cells. Notice that the cells at the apical most layer uh, in this particular section have a rounded shape. These cells are called dome cells because of their dome shaped or rounded appearance. Uh, many of them have one nuclei. Some of them actually have uh, two nuclei. You can see they have really uh, nice characteristic nucleoli that are visible in many of these cells as well. This epithelium gets its name because these dome cells actually change their shape depending on the level of distension in the bladder. So uh, when the bladder is empty, they, uh, the wall is relatively relaxed and these cells have their typical dome-shaped appearance. When the bladder fills with urine, the wall distends, causing these cells to flatten out, and they can appear more squamous in shape. 
because the apical layer of cells transitions from a dome shape to a squamous shape, that's why this epithelium gets its name. So this is transitional epithelium. This is a section of stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. There are many layers of cells here. Those of the basal surface tend to be cuboidal or sometimes even more columnar in shape. The reason it's referred to as stratified squamous epithelium though is because remember that epithelia with more than one layer uh, are always classified based on the shape of the apical most layers. So the apical most layers here are squamous. So this is stratified squamous epithelium, even though some of the layers contain more cuboidal or even columnar shaped cells. Here's the basal layer down here. This is connective tissue below that, so it's not part of the epithelium. Here's the apical layer. Um, we refer to this as non-keratinized uh, because you can actually see the nuclei here. In stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, the upper layers of tissues contain so much keratin um, that it essentially kills the, the cells and they're mostly just husks that contain lots of keratin and intermediate filament. So those cells tend to be dead and their nuclei are not visible. So if you can see visible nuclei here, here's a higher magnification, you can see the nuclei um, and the apical surfaces a little bit more clearly here. If you can see those nuclei, you know it's non-keratinized. So uh, for the purposes of the quiz or the exam, if you are asked to classify this type of tissue, you need to say stratified squamous epithelium, and you also need to say whether it is keratinized or non-keratinized in order to get uh, full credit. Here's a section that comes from thick skin, skin that you might find uh, on the uh, soles of your feet or the palms of your hand. Skin is an example of stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. It's the only place you find keratinized epithelium. Some of it's thin, some of it's thick. Uh, this is, comes from thick skin, so it has quite a few layers here. Uh, it's a very thick, thin skin, of course, is quite a bit thinner. But both of those tissues have in common uh, that the apical most layers of cells are dead. So you can see here it has an almost moth-eaten appearance on the top. Cells just kind of sloughing off and falling apart as their section. That's because they're dead. Um, the reason for that is due to the fact that these cells contain so much keratin as mentioned before and also due to uh, release of waterproofing substances uh, in this layer right here, which prevents diffusion of nutrients from reaching them. Remember that epithelium is avascular, and so survival of apical cells relies or depends on diffusion of nutrients from uh, vascularized tissue below them. So these cells are essentially dead here, and you can't see any nuclei, so we, stratif we uh, classify this as stratified uh, keratinized, stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. Here is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium from thin skin. So notice it's much thinner. Here's the basal uh, layer right here and in thick skin the basal layer starts down here. So this is much thicker. It spans uh, all of this distance here. Um, even though this tissue is, is thinner it's still classified as stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. Again, if you look at the apical most layers of cells here, you can see they're, uh, they're very thin, kind of wispy appearing, sloughing off. Uh, these cells are dead. There are no visible nuclei. So be able to classify epithelium, uh, stratified squamous epithelium as being keratinized or non-keratinized. At this point you don't need to be able to identify it as thick or thin skin. We're going to look at uh, classifications of uh, integument in more detail later on in the trimester. This is a section that shows a particularly rare type of epithelium. This, as you might guess from looking at it, is stratified cuboidal epithelium. You can see two layers of cuboidal cells. 
This is a rare epithelium. It's only found in with very limited distribution in the, in the body, uh, primarily in large ducts of sweat cells. And you can also find it uh, in mammary gland ducts as well, which is actually a type of modified sweat gland. So uh, this is a very rare epithelium. You'll have a chance to look at it in the scope later on in the trimester. So this is pretty easy to identify because the two layers of uh, epithelium here, or the, the two layers of cuboidal cells uh, are pretty obvious. And then finally on this section you can see another type of rare epithelium. This is classified as stratified cub uh, columnar epithelium. Stratified columnar epithelium like stratified cuboidal epithelium also has two layers but in stratified columnar epithelium the apical layer is columnar, the basal layer is always uh, cuboidal in shape. And so again it's classified as stratified columnar because it's named for the apical most layer which is indeed columnar. You can see that these columnar cells have their nuclei towards the more basal portion of those cells and such that the cytoplasm is uh, mostly confined to the apical portion of these cells. Uh, you can find this epithelium in some limited distribution in the body including the conjunctiva of the eyes uh, you can also find it in the ducts of uh, large ducts of sweat glands, for instance. So that's it for this week, and uh, good luck studying.